Valley Tribune podcast. In this episode, we'll talk about privation. Now, perhaps when one he first hears this term, it doesn't sound too interesting or it doesn't seem to imply anything, uh, well, really concerning our everyday lives. However, nothing could be further from the truth, especially for our day and age. Call it modern or postmodern. Because privation is the basis for the favorite question of modern man. The question for which he held uh, his ancestors in antiquity and middle ages uh, in contempt. Because they uh, apparently never ask, answered it to a satisfactory manner. This question is question of evil. What is evil? Why it exists? What it consists of? Yeah, at the outset, I want to uh, stress this because uh, this question really hasn't been a center of religion or metaphysics or metaphysics of religion uh, in a similar fashion as it is today. It was not on, maybe not today, but let's say at times in times that prepared the situation we have now, the modern age, uh, where question of evil became the ultimate one, especially in 20th century, because apparently uh, the great uh, calamities of 20th century were worse than anything in history and all the people who lived be uh, before 20th or maybe uh, 19th and 18th century never encountered evil and this uh, includes people from ancient Greeks, uh, Persians, uh, Egyptians, the Jews uh, and then... Uh, followers of Christ, the Christians who kind of like unified different uh, different peoples of, of let's say it's at least part of the world, but in original times in uh, people of Middle East, Mediterranean and uh, parts of Europe, they never, never encountered evil. Jesus was crucified, but he for some reason couldn't find it in itself to uh, conceptualize evil. Of course, I'm being ironic uh, and the language barrier always uh, prevents me of being funny while I'm ironic, but we cannot help that, uh, unfortunately. Uh, the important thing is being to the point and being precise in defining the terms. Uh, in this podcast, we will see that this is really not true. Uh, but as we always try to do, we'll uh, build the podcast on examples from everyday life. Uh, but at the outset, we have to have uh, some kind of outline of what is privation. Because privation is almost universally taken to be a basis for evil in tradition. Uh, whether it be metaphysical tradition of ancients, whether it be Christian tradition. So when you try to conceptualize, I mean evil in Christianity is a personal, uh, originally a personal act of, of a specific being. Uh, but uh, when you want to give, give a kind of... Uh, explanation or as they say resolution of what it is so it can be comprehended in many given cases it is the privation it comes from the greek word stereosis and originally was used by aristotle uh, although he didn't coin the word the word as far as i know he coined the word energia by all accounts but not privation uh, privation could be even understood as uncomplementary opposite of energy. Yeah, it is the privation is what its name says, uh, privation of something that should be present. For instance, 
One example of privation is blindness, being blind. Uh, it's very interesting, for instance, uh, how the uh, tradition observed this, this, this strange phenomena, let's call it. Uh, when Aquinas talks about privation at one point, as an example of conceptual relation, he says that blindness is, uh, is a relation. That is to say that it is the difference in being that is only conceptual, where it is nothing in itself. So I will not go too far into this because I myself am not always sure what those things mean. But uh, just to give you an illustration how differently those minds worked. Uh, all any, both conceptual uh, and both privation is obviously understood by him in quite a different uh, way that we understand it now. Because, for instance, when you say that something is conceptual, first of all, you have to bear in mind that con conceptio uh, has always implication of birth, giving birth. There is an aspect of life in it. It's not just creating concepts as we do now, when, when apparently even PCs and computers can create this. Uh, the other is that everything that is conceptual, there are always uh, different uh, kind of spiritual beings that can conceive <laughs> concepts. Angels and ultimately God, demons. And men are only in the midst of this soul. So when you say, for instance, that something is conceptual relation, it's not always sure does it really think about we humans making concepts of something that is not real in itself. It can be that angels are doing that and so on and so forth. Uh, one has to have this in mind. But that's just a digression. Uh, so privation, blind, blindness is, I think, a good example. Death would be ultimate privation, because privation is a negation of form, a negation of energy, of act, of what is ultimately considered to be real. And the concept energia, in its, and also in its Latin, Latin uh, translation, actus, uh, is a term that is best understood as all terms from its exemplary form, its most perfect form. And most perfect form of energia would be, I'd say, something between thinking and life. And it is the term that is uh, convertible with reality. This was uh, the understanding of reality. It implies hierarchy and it implies that its paradigmatic form is not uh, dead matter as we would use it now or even movement to which it is very closely linked in Greek kinesis, uh, but rather life thinking, uh, deliberating, and so on and so forth. And the idea is that everything in a, in a way participates at least imitating uh, these higher forms of reality. Uh, uh, privation is the some kind of negation of this. And as such, it is basis of evil. And as such, it is really a non-real basis. It's not the basis that you can uh, take as a real being because it exists only uh, on assumption that something real upon which it acts uh, exists. So you cannot go blind if you don't have sight, obviously. You cannot destroy something if it al already doesn't exist as something. Now, for some reason, in modern age, in 20th century especially, people found this uh, unsatisfactory. They wanted, they wanted, uh, they wanted a better, better notion of evil because it supposedly doesn't explain the horrors of Second World War and so on and so forth. Well, <sighs> selective as people are about horrors that they allowed to be defined as horrors, by the way. Uh, well, 
this comes for various reasons and maybe to to illustrate at least some of them let us turn to examples apparently and uh, at least in in opinion of those who who consider this traditional notion of evil as uh, uh, unsatisfactory it doesn't account for personal evil for evil men and women occasional women uh, because obviously they think that uh, the human evil is is the utmost of evil and as such it is not really comprehensible from human point of view which in fact is true but they don't uh, draw the conclusions far enough so apparently man is more evil than the devil himself and only people in the 20th century were able to understand that because nothing before 20th century was as horrible as 20th century okay let's see what this means let's take a look at what it means to be evil man and woman i'll take example of two such people that are real people not talking about exemplars i'm talking about real people and i have to note here according to my experience the evil people in the sense i would be talking about right now are extremely rare i think that's one of plato's uh, good uh, insights he puts on the side note like in in, in phaedon his dialogue Phaedon when he says Socrates says that most people are kind of like what we would now call mainstream a real good and real evil are very rare and this is uh, this is very true there are not many evil people there are infinitely more evil deeds than evil people because good people also do evil and we'll see what this means so let's take these two evil people let us start with the guy imagine and i'm talking about a real 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 human being i don't know if he's alive now kind of like I'm not sure but uh, this is the man who is devoted by by all of his existence to lying if we were to uh, extract uh, one main character feature of him it will be lying so it's not simply lying about uh, some in some situation where for instance cops uh, hold him at, at the border and he's smuggling something and he's lying to cops every sane person does this if angel were angels were to smuggle things across the border especially bosnian croatian border uh, the cheap tobacco they have in bosnia angel would lie also but they can fly so they don't have to stop at border i don't mean this i mean the man who invents himself by lying so you meet him and if you have an attitude of accepting as is normal if you are open to new acquaintance uh, your unconscious uh, attitude is first to believe him and this guy or the first things he'll tell you or not tell you just try to demonstrate to you uh, in a sense of presenting himself will be a lie that is to say he is lying about the own uh, his own very essence of who he is his own very person this means that uh, uh, privation he enacts is directed towards himself that is to say towards that which makes him what he is and the essence of his personhood and now to illustrate uh, this is the guy who will construct uh, the every every event in his life 
upon imagination, upon something that he wants to, others to see instead of the real truth. This is coupled with something else. This is coupled with uh, inborn or innate, not inborn, innate desire, appetite, uh, in, in a very original sense of the word, for narcotics. Or, if not, if not available, now alcohol. But not in the sense of enjoying, merely enjoying those, but in the sense... <laughs> in the sense of the need to fuel his very existence. There is uh, the existing without, uh, without narcotics is unthinkable to such men. And now I must note, I, I would say that I met few of those, but not all of them were evil as the paradigmatic uh, example I have now in mind. Uh, now, there are junkies who are junkies before they ever tried dope, heroin, or, or, or heard about it even. And in, in our day and age, uh, at not now, maybe so much, but maybe 20 years ago, at least in my country, they were, uh, there was, a, uh, until 20 years ago, there, there were quite a lot of junkies. And by some, they were, uh, they were, always uh, portrayed as victims. In my experience, uh, there are victims of heroin. In a sense, they, they, they really stumbled into it. But most of those people uh, took H because they like it. And uh, this is one of the reasons uh, why some people can never get off the horse because they like to be on horse. And as this is the drug uh, that is, in fact, completely uh, isolating a person psychologically in himself, makes him self-sufficient, it's very egoistic narcotic. Uh, it seems to dovetail very good with this kind of person I'm just talking about. And this kind of person is seeking the state that... Uh, heroin uh, dope provides obviously of course there are other narcotics any kind of narcotics uh, narcotic will do the very strange thing about this person is once you figure uh, it it's initially uh, his he was able to fool most of all everybody this is a kind of lying a kind of form of lying that is not easy to see through. If I would give you an account, for instance, of what he was saying at first, you would probably uh, figure out that something is wrong with that guy. But it is different uh, to read an account uh, than to really encounter other person. Because personal interaction, personal Causality that is uh, at work between persons is something really special and cannot be cannot be uh, reduced uh, to to abstraction in a modern sense of the word abstraction. Uh, he was very much able to fool others. This is probably because he is very much able to fool himself. He is working on self destruction in a sense that his self-destruction is not out, some, out of some notion of guilt, but out of self-love. And probably uh, inclination to absolutely affirm this self-love in every which way he can. And this works destructively towards that which is given to him, which, which he is, in fact. This is a kind of man uh, that really cannot do good intentionally. This is horrifying thing, something that you... And cannot stop lying, compulsively lying. And cannot stop destroying himself with, uh, with some kind of narcotic. And the effect this kind of person has on others is this extremely devastating especially on others who are who uh, let him in their own hearts 
uh, and it is not that he will do something intentionally. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's emana- it's something that emanates from his very essence and draws you into destruction. And persons who are not uh, so destructive as him, but have some appetite for destruction in themselves, uh, aside from their appetite for good, uh, can lose their lives in the presence of such person and one person indeed did lose her life in his presence in a way that he was uh, never touched her never directly caused it but everybody especially knew, her family knew he did he was not welcome at the funeral and so on and so forth not to go into too much details uh, it's something that you have to take my word about uh, on uh, This is evil, one evil man. I would say that is evil. And there is some such a strange finality about these people, people like this. You don't see a way he can get out of it. You don't find it in you that you wish him to get out of it. This is also something very interesting. You kind of know that this is what he wants even consciously, that this is uh, this is the way he will never, never abandon. And what is interesting, this person deeply suffers, uh, suffering from all kinds of sentiments, from wounded ego to I don't know what else. This is not cool, calm, and collected evil, evil doer. This is like a black hole of destruction. That go the black hole of privation, one might add. Because if you noticed, all I was talking about here was negativity. The person whose essence is impossible. Is rendering itself actively impossible because essence cannot be a negation. It has to be affirmation. It has to be something, not nothing. He's trying to turn it into nothing. The other person I would put forward uh, is a woman. And this woman uh, was not so much a narcotic abuser because this woman is much more cool and collected than this man and even more destructive, but not so self-destructive, although that too, to an extent. Uh, there is a kind of this self-destructive note in such people, no matter how rational they can be. So this is the person that is not, first of all, liar. It's second. The first of all, this is the person who breaks any kind of unity existing between other people. So to give you an example, uh, she had a husband that she when he st- uh, first met her in a matter of two weeks he had no more friends he broke contact with all his friends in a matter of month i think he broke contact with his family now i know that uh, sometimes people call this such kind of uh, person that uh, manages to manipulate others into doing this craziness uh, it's a sociopath uh, there are sociopathic uh, aspects of this person, but I don't really uh, believe that psychology can be a primary uh, approach to people. It has to be simply uh, contact with them, personal contact. And uh, as we are persons, we talk in terms not of uh, medical conditions, but good and evil. And this person is evil. Trust me, <laughs> because she would do evil to you and to anybody around her. Uh, and such persons in, also destroy destroy those who open their hearts to them. And people usually open their hearts to them because they have something in common. Although they don't have essence in common. I'm talking about thinking about husband to this person. Now, uh, God rest his soul, uh, he was not evil uh, to the contrary he, he was uh, he had a very good heart 
uh, you have to you would have to know him good to to understand to realize this but he really had it but also he had uh, insecurities uh, rather big ego and so on and such things uh, such things uh, laid him open to uh, deep to be deep influenced by this person now this is also a kind of negation but this is not negation of the very essence of oneself it is the affirmation of this essence i would say through negation of everybody else through destruction of everybody uh, uh, completely wanton this is a kind of person that will sit at a table with you and your very good friend and in a completely normal uh, normal conversation out of the blue she will throw the bone between you something that could completely out of the context i'm talking from experience now but as you know i don't like to talk too much uh, details about myself and people i know i'm trying to lift this to some kind of philosophical level where anybody listening to this can profit from it intellectually at least uh, throws the bone between you completely out of the blue i mean completely out of the context uh to to push you at each other's throat and if you are not attentive uh you can fall for this but the main 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 feature of this act is uh uh it's complete uh, complete randomness you cannot you cannot it's not something you can predict you can only predict that son this this woman is absolutely bad news and you don't want to be near her uh so this is again appetite for destruction i pushed forward one more time this word and i am not guns and roses fans you connoisseurs of the late 80s and early 90s but appetite for destruction is something that exists and something that was talked about and i won't go <laughs> into quoting uh, authorities uh, i'm writing an essay uh, that is closely related uh, related to this subject on an in, uh, it is uh, on inability to crave death to wish death in life and inability to be a normal human being for instance and and an advocate for euthanasia and is built assisted suicide i mean it is built upon uh, some of those concepts and it will be really in depth it will take a lot of time unfortunately one of the reasons why we have a bit of a pause on kali tribune because i'm wrestling with that and other things in real life uh what this means <clears throat> is that there is an appetite in human being but the real appetite is the appetite for energia for actus for being in act now i'm starting to use these metaphysical terms are very important because Uh, i think we now have a content to fill in those forms so they don't remain death and abstract to us uh, so we crave to be this is very complex very simple but also very complex thing to explain this craving to be sometimes called cornatus in uh, in middle ages uh, this is the fact that every being in so far it is being is good and every good in so far it is good is something that is appetible something towards other things crave uh in one sense to reach the to perfect themselves because good as the end of actions is perfect uh, perfectible of the being that acts towards it and in the other sense good is that in which everything wants to rest and uh, find its fulfill final fulfillment 
uh, the idea was to cut very long story short you'll have an essay and then I will I will bust my chops writing it <laughs> so this is very difficult subject uh, not to put it in too simplified terms as I will do now but really give you the the, 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 the sense how deep this goes uh, from Boetius for instance uh, that uh, early medieval philosopher and theologian that uh, good is identical with being insofar the being is in act and uh, being is in act insofar it has in it uh, the so-called act of being it has in it some kind of energia that is making it real that is making it not staying passive and just potential and every being in this world to some extent has an act of being ultimately ultimately the act of being is something that god provides to everything this is the act both the act of creation and the act of keeping things in being so that god is always present in a kind of very uh, well very dynamic sense i would say because both esse and energia these words uh, imply what we would now call dynamic Although Greeks would not call it, or Latins would not call it dynamic, because dynamis is the complementary opposite of energia originally. It's very peculiar how those terms get inverted with age. And by the way, those are terms that we still use, although in quite different meaning. We didn't invent new ones, because probably new ones cannot be invented. Yeah. But that's a story in itself. We'll have... A opportunity to write about it at length so uh, not that every being is good but every being insofar it is being is good because it participates on some kind of perfection uh, because it is created and being created means participate in good because everything god creates is good now i'm simplifying and not only simplifying i am making something that is 3d into 2d for the sake of argument but this is kind of like dogmatic way to say it yeah but there is a way to see this i would say not only uh, put it in a systematic explanation but really intellectually see this thing uh, and and what that will be an, uh, another story now what i want to say here is that appetite is always for good because all things uh, all actions are for the sake of some good now you can make an argument that you are doing something good and it 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 happens that your good was to exterminate the whole people all your neighbors and so on and so forth but you did it for good reason you clothed it in good garb. Do you think it is really accidental that when you uh, you are watching a movie, a stupid uh, black and white kind of good and evil clash movie, how many people, especially if evil is really depraved without charisma, when it really suffers from privation, how many on, uh, how many uh, people in audience will root for evil? I don't think much. I don't think maybe maybe even nobody. And how many people in this audience you would call good? I don't even think. I also think uh, not that much. Everybody roots for the good. If not for the good, if the good is becoming banal and and not really good, then they root for evil guy because he has sometimes a charisma but charisma in itself is good <laughs> it's for instance and one of the things i i really cannot stand just to make a digression in modern kinema uh, and modern mentality in general this idea of charismatic villain uh, this is very questionable thing something like an honest thief i don't think i don't think such things exist there is something like an evil charisma but it's not really charisma it's something less else i would say so as you see this is appetite appetite for loving something and going towards something is going towards good it's going towards affirmation 
Going towards negation, however, in this sense of privation is something very strange. And uh, it is never complete. It is the corruption of the appetite. But when I say that something uh, is corruption of the appetite, I don't mean bad ingestion-inducing, because rocks, in this sense, have an appetite. They have a place in the world. Appetite gives you some kind of a place because everything is in energia. It is not static, not in the sense of movement, but rather in the sense of uh, imitating life or imitating thought, not being life or not being thought. It's very maybe uh, it's uh, kind of difficult to to put this in words even. Because the very expression is so different than what we use today for, for the same word, energy. Anyways, uh, privation would be corruption of this, uh, some level of corruption of uh, what this appetite discloses. And if uh, privation would be complete corruption of appetite, well, then you have real trouble. You have real evil. Because then a person... Uh, turns against against reality in a sense not in a sense of not accepting the painful reality but accepting uh, the foundation of reality the dynamic foundation which is God's act which is act of good if it is uh, turning against what should be let's say and in some way even consciously doing this now, if this is not evil, then I don't know what is. Because this is the, the attempt to destroy the creation. This is attempt and uh, primarily to destroy oneself. Because everything we uh, discover, we discover first through ourselves in experience. If you're talking about experience, this is how we see the world. Not in the sense of this modern subject-object discrepancy, knowing subject, not knowing object. No, 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 but we are immersed in everything, in all things, and things are immersed in us also because what we know, we assimilate ourselves to this, our minds. So there is no discrepancy, but this is how we discover things and this is uh, what evil, evil people, in fact, hate the most. They hate, most hate themselves. And this uh, self-hatred is a form of what appears to be self-love. But it is the affirmation of, of, of let's say, a radical self-love that, that simply, simply pulls with itself uh, into an abyss everything that is. Uh, so uh, the ultimate evil, humans are not capable for ultimate evil, I would say, uh, but there is a being that is capable, uh, we won't go into this, of course, now, yeah. stepping over the bounds of uh, what I intended here, but I will conclude with saying about these people, the people of depravity, I would call them in a quite cold and terminologically exact sense, is the fatality of what they do. There seems to be a kind of decision in them, that is irrevocable. Not irrevocable in itself, like there is something preventing them to change it, but they simply are so in love with destruction that they will never change. You sense this. You sense that it is immaterial to try to change them and it is absolutely material to feel sorry for them. God forbid. Because they wouldn't be sorry for you. Don't you worry about that. But not only that, but they are somehow really, really seem doomed. Now, if this is not evil, if this does not uh, satisfy the high criteria of postmodern people, then I don't know what does. I don't know what does. Because people in our day and age think very highly of themselves and want to see... Uh, why they broke why they broke a nail on their hand or I don't know somebody looked at them sideways uh, they want metaphysical explanation of such evil this is explanation of evil this was an explanation of evil in traditional understanding of evil as privation of good 
that is to say that the explanation that really doesn't give evil a very high ontological status. But I put, uh, uh, I injected these uh, personal examples uh, just to demonstrate uh, how deep this simple degradation, ontological, metaphysical degradation of evil goes and uh, what it means in reality. So thank you for your attention. This was Branko Malic for Kali Tribune Sanka. Thank you.